if you're not delegating in your business, you are telling yourself and everybody else that you are the best at everything. And it's just not true. I'm sorry to tell you this. I love bookkeeping. Hi, everyone. And thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. My name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. And thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode out every Tuesday and Thursday available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Today, I am going to be nitpicking. Not really. Great. I am going to be (laughs) interviewing my co-host, Melissa, and we're going to be expanding on what she was talking about at BKX, which is delegating. Melissa is the queen of delegating in order to develop and grow. Um, In fact, I'm pretty sure her speech was called Delegate, Develop, and Grow. Um, So we're going to be diving into that today. And I'm just going to be asking her some questions. And we're going to be kind of expanding on delegation and how it helps you grow your business and grow as a person. Um, Melissa, when was the first time you delegated in your business? Uh, Literally immediately. (laughs) Immediately? Okay, what was it? Yes, immediately. So... um... So I came out in 2019 and I, uh, I needed an account manager. I, like I immediately hired an account manager to deal with the client facing work. Like I knew that in order for me to build the operations, like the back end to get the processes in order, um, that I would not be able to do the one-on-one client work. So I immediately got an account manager, immediately got bookkeepers. Um, was like the actual work needs to be done by people much better at it than me um, so that I can work on actually building the back end operations of the business to situate us to grow. So um, I think that's kind of my philosophy is that there will always be, be- somebody that's better at things in your business than you are. And it should be your job to find those people and then to take care of them so they take care of your business. Ain't that the truth? There is always somebody better than me out there. And <laughs> the sooner you admit that and the sooner you find them is when your life gets a whole heck of a lot easier. <laughs> no one laughed at me during this, which is, I was like, man, I thought I'd get more laughs. But like the audacity that you have to think that you are the only one that can do something in your business. Cause that's what happens. But I think people don't think it's funny. They're like, they get called out, but it's so true though, guys. Like if you think that like, if you're not delegating in your business, you are telling yourself and everybody else that you are the best at everything. And it's just not true. I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm sure you are the best at some things, but I can, there's always going to be somebody better than you, right? Like it's, and it's not to neg you. It's not to like push you down or make you feel like that you're not worthwhile. It's because you need to be the best CEO of your firm. That's what that if you want to grow an actual firm, you need to be the best as the CEO and have everybody else be better than you at everything else. Because if you are the best bookkeeper on your team, you're not going to grow a successful bookkeeping business. I mean, you might have a, a, the best one man bookkeeping business, but you're not going to expand your team. You're not going to be able to expand your company in the way that you want. If you are the best bookkeeper, then you're not going to succeed at that, in my opinion. Um, you need to be the best CEO and that requires delegation. Man, I'm so glad we're talking to you about this today because you have so much knowledge. Can I ask, what was the first thing you delegated in your personal life? And it doesn't have to be like personal, (sighs) personal. It can just be like non-business related. Yeah, no. So I think I've talked about this before, like especially in the BBL stay-at-home mom group is um, especially when I was, uh, you know, really bringing the business up, I realized that like, home things were not getting done. Um, my husband was deployed. I'm also like not the best homemaker to begin with. I just want people to know that I do love cleaning. Um, but I hate cooking. I hate doing dishes. Um, I can do laundry, uh, about five times before it actually gets done. Like I am that person that forgets it in the washing machine and then has to rerun it because it smells like mildew. So my prime, I was like, you know what? Like, Again, I'm not the best homemaker, so why don't I delegate that? So I did get a housekeeper. Um, at the time, um, had we had like n- not enough money. Um, you know, the business had really not taken off. We were really just like 
the money that was coming in was going to pay people. And so we were lucky to have the income from uh, my husband being in the military, but the company itself wasn't really making money. Um, so it was a hundred dollars a month and it was, but it was like my saving grace. Like it was like for like that day and like a week and a half after like things seemed clean and I had like peace of mind and I was able to work up to twice a month. Um, and then now um, we still do. So I, now I do have a housekeeper in, in Nicaragua. It's very common. All houses kind of come with caretakers. They even have like caretaker houses. Um, and so when we rented this house, there was a caretaker that already came with it. Um, and then when we rented it long term, they let the caretaker go. Um, and I hired her instead. Um, so she works for me now directly. But um, I, you know, that to me, like if I had to pick, like, I always joke that if I had to give birth again and I had to choose between my husband and a doula, I'd pick a doula. Like if I had to choose between like Daniel and my housekeeper, like it'd be really hard. Like, (laughs) I I mean, that's so terrible. It's a joke guys, but no, that's like how much my life has changed. So like if you're struggling with home stuff, you're, and and you feel like you can't dedicate to your business because all the things at home need to be done. Really, really think about how, you know, especially if you can afford it, how can you delegate the things to get done at home that maybe you don't enjoy doing? Because when I was cleaning my house, because I I do have OCD, so I have certain, you know, standards for how things were to get done that I couldn't even live up to. And then when I would clean the house and get it to where I wanted it to, and my kids would immediately make a mess or my husband would immediately make a mess, I was anxious and I was mad at them. And I was like, I don't want to be this mom that's mad at them for living in their house. Um, so I realized that I was a better person when I delegated it because then it wasn't as personal to like, you know, like a personal affront if somebody were to mess up the house. So Mm. that's a long rant on that, but no, no. Um, I think people like to hear about that because we all kind of go through the same struggles and don't always like to talk about it or don't always like to admit the struggles and that ultimately we do need to delegate in order to help ourselves in order to help ourselves grow. We need extra help. I am so bad about beating myself up about this. Like I am the worst about, Oh, I want to do everything at total a hundred percent capacity and never get tired, never have a mental breakdown. And like, what am I thinking? I'm never going to do that. I was like that until I had my daughter, I think this experience of building this business while being pregnant and my husband being deployed and then a pandemic hitting definitely had a really hard time. Um, I had postpartum depression after I had my daughter and, um, it was the first time I I went to a midwife, my, my midwife. And I told her, and I was like, Hey, I need something. Um, and I was like really embarrassed about it. And I was like, I promise I'm not going to like hurt my daughter. I'm just going to like kill myself, you know? Um, and, uh, I make a joke about this, please. If you have these thoughts, please do seek professional help. I did. That is what was happening. Like I was, I was suicidal at the time. And, um, my midwife was the first doctor that ever listened to me and found me an antidepressant that doesn't make OCD worse and literally changed my life. And it was the first time in my entire life where I was able to just be a regular human and not just feel like I had to be a robot and everything had to be perfect and everything had to be done all the time or I was like a worthless piece piece of crap. Like, so if you feel like that, definitely ask for help um, in that, that way. And also know that it's okay to ask for help in other areas of your life because, um, again, everyone used to have a village and we don't anymore. That's how like things were, you know, able to get done. Right. And, you know, the 40 hour work week was designed with the idea that there would be somebody at home handling all the homework. And now you have two parents working 40 hours full time, uh, with nobody to handle everything at home. It's just not a sustainable lifestyle uh, for anybody to maintain. And so you have to know that and realize like it is okay to have a village. It's better to have a village um, and to ask for help and to set things up so that you can have a good life that you like living where you don't feel like you're constantly having to be on. Right. It's hard because I feel like delegation a lot of the times can come from a dark place of like, okay, I need help. I need help here. And ultimately it can translate over to your business. 
But I think it's important to realize when and where you need help in areas of your business before you get to that dark place. Today's show is brought to you by Keeper, the one app to run your bookkeeping business. Keeper helps you get faster client responses with your own custom branded QuickBooks integrated client portal. Finally, you can say goodbye to those pesky spreadsheets full of uncategorized transactions. Keeper also helps you catch those embarrassing coding errors before your clients do. And with Keeper, you can generate beautiful custom reports that your clients will absolutely love to read. To find out more, go to keeper.app. That's keeper.app. Mention I Love Bookkeeping to get 20% off your first three months. Again, go to keeper.app to find out more. Thank you for listening. So I really like um, kind of this phrase that, you know, typical people trade their time for money, but wealthy people trade money for time. And that is my focus now is that I would much rather spend money to not have to do something so that that time can be spent with, spent with my family um, versus being on the clock where you're like, well, I have to work 40 hours a week because I have to make this money so that I can just live and I can just get by. Um, changing your mindset, getting to a place where you can. I understand that that has to be the way that you you work, right? To get to the point where you can change to a wealth mindset. You have to build that wealth first. And we were there where again, you know, we lived on less than $30,000 a year for several years as we built this business. We did not have a lot of money. Um, but you, you want to, again, that's your big goal, right? Where you get to the point where delegation needs to happen so that you can be the person that you want to be and live the life you want to live. So you really have to do an internal audit of what do I want my personal life to look like? Right. And then how do I need to set it up to get it there? Yeah. And I think that a lot of the times it's hard because delegation is expensive and it is not everybody is in the financial place to say, okay, I can afford to pay somebody to do this or I can afford to have somebody take this load off. Um, And that can also be kind of another burden weighing down on somebody is the financial burden of delegation and how I guess, you know, overcoming that can be a huge, huge step, but it's like, it it can be kind of a vicious cycle because you catch yourself, you can catch yourself in this cycle of like, okay, I can't really afford. So I'm going to do this myself. And then you kind of get to that dark place of like, okay, I cannot manage all of this and I need help. So what do you do when you kind of get into that cycle? So a good way to think about it, which this, I know this doesn't help actually with the money issue, but I'll get to that, is to think about how much you can contribute with that time. So for instance, if I'm not doing other things in the business, I, I primarily work in sales. And an average client for us is a value of $10,000 a year. And it will take me about two hours on average to convert that client to $10,000. And so in two hours, I will make $10,000 for the year. Now, of course, there's other work that gets involved to that. If you want to just break it down by just like say the monthly fee or like the onboarding fee. So our onboarding fee is $9.95. So two hours of work, I make $1,000. No matter what, it's non-refundable. If they don't move on, we don't do any other work. They decide they don't want to. It's just, it's $9.95, two hours, I made $1,000. Um, What if I didn't have that two hours? Because I was doing work that it would have cost me $50 to delegate. So if I can delegate, say, bookkeeping work, two hours of bookkeeping work at $25 an hour, that's $50. And then I turn around and I make $1,000. So you really have to think about what you can do, again, as the CEO of your business in that time. Now, how do you actually get the money if you don't have the money in the bank? Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you have some money, there's cheap ways to do it. First of all, look at your personal situation. Um, do you have kids that are old enough to do chores that they aren't doing? Um, this can start from a very early age. I'm not judging people's parenting. I know people have different thoughts on this, but if you have teenagers, 
those teenagers can do their own laundry. Those teenagers can wash the dishes. Um, you can pay them, you know, and you don't have to pay them a living wage because you gave birth to them. Um, you can pay them uh, in, you know, uh, fake money, uh, whatever money you want to do. Like, uh, you know, they earn, you know, more screen time or whatever it is. But utilize your family. Um, cause there are a lot of moms and I was this mom too, that does everything so that everybody else can relax. And again, it's not sustainable. Um, bring your kids in on this and, and have them help you run a productive home. Um, split the duties between yourself and your husband. If you have one, um, lean on extended family. If you have it, um, to get some of that personal load off of you where you can. If you can't do that, if you don't have family, I know that that does not exist for everybody. Um, if you have kids, especially, um, there are things like uh, mother's helpers, which are like younger kids, younger girls, usually um, teenagers that are willing to help at a lower rate as well um, to get some of that time off of you. Now, from a business perspective, if you need to delegate business items, Upwork is a really great option for inexpensive labor. Um, I... I'm a huge advocate. I think that if you can't afford to hire U.S.-based labor, I think that you should um, because I think that it's our duty to. Um, I think that's a huge reason why large corporations take home huge profit while they basically just take advantage of people across the world um, by paying people $3 an hour when they could afford to pay a living wage and they don't. Um, I think it's unethical. I'll go on a mountain and die on this. That being said, I do outsource some labor, so we can talk about that another time. But I think that when you cannot afford to pay somebody $25 an hour um, for whatever task it is that you do, that it is perfectly ethical for you to go on Upwork and find somebody that names their own price. Because it's not unethical if somebody tells you, I will do this work for $4 an hour. Um, they want to do that work for $4 an hour and it will help you and you can afford to do it so that you can grow your business so that you can hire somebody that you can pay $25 an hour. Um, that is definitely going to have to be another podcast because we talked about that before, um, you know, to outsource or not to outsource. Um, there are options is what I'm saying to do things on the inexpensive route. That's not going to be the best way for you to do it, but it's going to be a way for you to walk into the door of delegation so that you can grow your business to the point where you have more options. That's awesome. What are some things that you were able to do now that you have delegated? And you've been kind of like, I think you're like the queen of delegation. Um, so what are some like, what are some really great things that you've had the space for in your life now that you've successfully delegated? Everything, guys. Oh my gosh. Um, right now, I really am just doing sales. Um, I do meet with my client success team once a week. And then I have the company meeting once a month. And then I have some miscellaneous things. Like I like to check in, even though it's not my job anymore. Um, there are people on my team that I hired back in the day um, that I used to meet with on a regular basis that I still meet with from time to time because I love them as humans and I just want to make sure they're okay. So, but for the most part, my schedule is really at the whim of sales and I have sales meetings available on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for a limited like four to five hour block. Um, I'm willing to take 10 to 12 free consultations a week and that is it. Um, and so I have a very light schedule right now. I was working a lot more for a while, um, especially leading us to BKX. And then I was working on you know, my sales course and kind of my consulting, uh, two days a week. Um, I have pulled back on that. Um, I haven't taken on additional clients. Um, I'm really just finishing up a few one-on-one -on -one projects, but then I'm, I'm halting that for a while, uh, because I need, I need to be on re a reduced workload right now. And I'm only able to do that through delegation and knowing that everything's taken care of. And I will be delegating sales. Um, so my goal is to be completely out of direct sales by the end of this year. And then I will be fully a CEO that just focuses on, you know, marketing, in-person events, um, you know, webinars, really just kind of be the face of the business um, going into the new year. And uh, I will probably work maybe 10 to 15 hours a week at the most. Wow. So I guess that's like biggest like people listening, that's like their goal. 
um, yeah. is to have that schedule and to get where you are. And it takes so much work. It takes so much dedication and, and also delegation. Um, it's a, a thousand percent, guys. I'm serious. You cannot do this by yourself. I'm t- and, and if you could, you don't want to. Because again, like I said, I still meet with people back from the beginning because I just love those people. Like I literally have, and I, I, I'll shout her out. Like I was talking to Daniel the other day and I was like, I just want to tell you that I just love this whole thing that we did here. Um, I love this community. I said, everyone that we work with is amazing and I'm so happy to have them in my life. And I had just been messaging Heather who, who doesn't work with me anymore. Um, but we still like kind of, you know, message back and forth on messenger and, and things like that. And she checks in with me and I check in with her from time to time. And I just told him, I said, you know, I'm just so thankful that I have Heather in my life. And that would have never happened if we hadn't gone on this journey. Um, but it, it's so true though, because like, I think about it's again, it's not just me. And that's a good thing because I literally could not have done this without the people that are around me and not work in the company and people that don't work in the company anymore that, that used to work with us. And so, um, everyone, you know, I feel like, you know, everyone sees that we're successful and they think it's just Daniel and I No, man, I'm telling you that there's 30 people around us doing this with us. Um, and, and it's definitely a huge team effort and, um, I wouldn't want to do it without most of those people. That's awesome. That's so great that you've, that you're kind of, uh, your story is kind of a testament to delegation. It's like, it's, it's, it's awesome for people that are listening who eventually want to have that super that super light work week or that super um, flexible work schedule and spend time with their families. That's really awesome. Um, So when it comes to delegation, and I think this is a kind of a struggle for a lot of people, how do you kind of let go of that that need to control? That's probably the biggest habit that people will have to work on. Um, And it was, it was tough for me too. Um, but again, if you think about your big picture that you need to get out of it, then somebody else doing a task to 80% satisfaction is better than you doing a hundred percent of it. And you can use that as a learning moment to show them how to get that 80% to the hundred percent. So it's going to take time. It's going to take commitment on your part to not step in and try to micromanage them. Um, and it's going to just, it's going to take patience, I think on your part and on the person that you're delegating to. Um, and so, you know, I always, I, I catch myself a lot of times and it was funny because originally when I, I, I gave up, um, kind of managing the bookkeeping department, the first director of bookkeeping was Greg. And I'm so glad it was Greg at first, um, because he <laughs> called me on my shit so many times guys, because I would continue, I would try to keep doing what was now his job, like not even consciously, (laughs) like I would just kind of get back into the, like keep trying to get back into doing things. And he would literally just be like, that is not your job anymore. Like he was so, he was actually really rude about it sometimes. And I love him for that because I needed that. So, um, you just have to, you know, definitely have patience, have somebody that has patience with you. It's going to take time and you just have to commit to teaching. Um, so it is, I think this is really great. If you have a teaching background, I love hiring teachers, man. Um, one of our um, amazing client success managers, Trista is, uh, has a teaching background and oh my God, she's so amazing. at like onboarding new clients and teaching them things. And she just has like a world's amount of patience. Um, but it really is, uh, you know, teaching others how to do what you need them to do and also teaching yourself. Um, so the more you delegate, the better you'll get at it. That's awesome. Um, and that's so great that you've been able to build a team that not only they're efficient at doing their job, they can call you on your shit because I think (laughs) that's so important (laughs) every day. That's so awesome. We hope you guys have enjoyed this episode about delegation. If you guys have comments, questions, concerns, or you just want to chat with us about delegation, um, please shoot us an email at hello at ilovebookkeeping.com. And don't forget to subscribe. We have new episodes out every Tuesday and Thursday available on Apple Podcasts, Google uh, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, my name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. And thank you for tuning in to the I Love Bookkeeping Podcast. I love bookkeeping.
keeping. Oh! Here's a little shout to all my friends working hard at keeping the books. You want to change your life, you want to grow that business. It's not as hard as it looks. Be a money guide, a profit coach. Step up your game and see.